Welcome. Today I am going to talk to you about the aerodynamics of rockets. By the end of this video, you will be able to understand what aerodynamics means and why aerodynamics is important in rocket design. Without further delay, let's get started. What is a rocket exactly? A rocket is a vehicle that produces a thrust to move by sending outwards particles at a very high speed. In chemical rockets, these high speed particles are basically gases generated through specialized chemical reactions. With the help of rockets, we will be able to impart very high speeds to heavy objects. Most of you must be aware of the Newton's cannonball thought experiment that is helpful in explaining how an object can be delivered to an orbit around Earth. If we throw an object from the top of a very tall building, it falls farther away on the ground when we throw it at a higher speed. Since Earth is round in shape, as we increase the speed at which we throw the object, beyond a limit it will not fall on the Earth at all. In such a situation, the object goes into an orbit around Earth. What we have to understand from this is that, if we want to deliver an object into an orbit around Earth, it has to be imparted with a very high speed. As I pointed out earlier, such high speeds can be imparted to objects with the help of chemical rockets. And for this reason, the main application of rockets is in launching satellites and the like to orbits around Earth. Such rockets, which are used to launch objects into space or more accurately to orbits around Earth, are called launch vehicles. The launch vehicles, uh, the biggest launch vehicles, weigh hundreds of tons. Bigger and uh, heavier launch vehicles can deliver heavier objects into orbit. Launch vehicles are also used for sending objects like capsules and landers to other planets. The uh, Indian Space Research Organizations ESLV, GSLV and GSLV Mark III are all examples of launch vehicles. The satellite that is to be launched into orbit, termed the payload, is placed at the top of the launch vehicle. The flight computer that controls the launch vehicle is usually placed below this. The remaining portion of the launch vehicle mainly consists of the tanks and the structure needed for storing its propellants, that is its fuel and the rocket engine that burns this propellant in the correct manner and a part called nozzle that directs and exits the gases generated by the engine from the vehicle appropriately. These are the main parts of a launch vehicle. Besides orbital launches, rockets are also used to launch payloads for high altitude observations and scientific experiments in the atmosphere. Such vehicles are called sounding rockets. Sounding rockets are usually very small compared to launch vehicles and weigh less than a ton, that is less than, less than 1000 kilograms. The first rocket that was launched from Tumpa Trivandrum on November 21st, 1963 was a sounding rocket. In a launch vehicle mission, after it lifts off from Earth and before it reaches an orbit around Earth, it has to pass through the Earth's atmosphere. When the mission is completed, the object that is delivered into orbit has a very high speed. If you consider an orbit that is 200 kilometers above Earth's surface, then this speed is around 8 kilometers per second. With such a high speed, we will be able to travel from Trivandrum to Castle Road in one minute. The Earth's atmosphere exists up to an altitude of around 120 kilometers. As we move from the surface of Earth towards this altitude, the density of air in the atmosphere keeps reducing. Above 120 km altitude, the density of air is negligible. The path traveled by most sounding rockets, or in other words, the trajectories of most sounding rockets remain within the atmosphere. Compared to launch vehicles, sounding rockets come back to the Earth's surface after attaining a peak altitude. Any rocket that is moving through the atmosphere will experience a force in the direction opposite to its movement, trying to slow it down. This force is called aerodynamic drag. The strength of this force, that is its magnitude, increases as the rocket's speed increases, at the same time as the rocket's altitude increases and it moves farther away from Earth's surface, the magnitude of drag decreases. 
when the trajectory of a launch vehicle that is the path that it travels is being designed one of the main considerations is to get it out of the atmosphere as quickly as possible it is not just rockets any object that moves through air experiences aerodynamic drag the force that we experience when we face a strong wind is basically aerodynamic drag the strength of aerodynamic drag is determined not just by the speed of wind or the speed of an object but also by the shape of the object under consideration for example when you are traveling in a vehicle if you hold the palm of your hand against the wind you know that you will feel aerodynamic drag in the direction of wind at the same time if you turn your palm downwards like a flat plate along the direction of wind the strength of aerodynamic drag that you feel will reduce this means that an object with a shape that allows air to flow through smoothly without blocking it much will experience a smaller magnitude or a smaller strength of aerodynamic drag the average speed of a vehicle that travels on the road is less than 100 km per hour rockets on the other hand achieve speeds of up to 5400 km per hour while traveling through the atmosphere this speed of 5400 km per hour is around 5 times the speed of sound itself the strength of aerodynamic drag that an object experiences is proportional to the square of its speed thus when the speed of an object doubles that is when it becomes two times the strength of aerodynamic drag that it experiences will become four times in the same way when the speed of an object becomes 10 times the strength of aerodynamic drag acting on it will become 100 times so you can imagine how much aerodynamic drag will be experienced by a rocket that is moving at five times the speed of sound. If the strength of aerodynamic drag is too high, then in order to overcome this and reach space, a rocket will need to burn a greater quantity of fuel. Given this problem, the only way to improve the fuel efficiency of a rocket is to design its shape appropriately that is in a manner that will result in minimum aerodynamic drag this can be done effectively through aerodynamic studies aerodynamic design of a rocket is challenging because while trying to minimize aerodynamic drag the rocket shape should also be able to accommodate its engines its uh, propellant and fuel tanks uh, propellant or fuel tanks payload etc all launch vehicles are designed with this philosophy in mind when we talk about aerodynamics of rockets, the next thing that comes up is the concept of stability. We know that when we fly paper airplanes, many times it so happens that a small gust of wind or any disturbance of that sort tends to destabilize the airplane's flight and it falls to the ground quickly. Some of you might know that this can be avoided by attaching a small weight to the front tip of the paper airplane by using clay or by attaching more paper when you do that the airplane will be able to remain more stable how does this happen in order to explain this we need to briefly talk about two concepts the first concept is that of center of gravity the center of gravity of an object is a point where you can assume all of its mass is concentrated for example, the center of gravity of a car will be closer to its heaviest parts, mostly around the front seats. The center of gravity of a human being is near the belly. In a similar manner, a rocket also has its own center of gravity. If you hang a car by attaching a chain exactly at its center of gravity, it will tend to stay horizontal. Attaching the chain at any other point uh, other than the center of gravity any point other than the center of gravity will cause the portion of the car having the center of gravity to fall downwards knowing this fact can help us in locating the center of gravity of any object the second concept that we need to discuss in order to understand stability is that of center of pressure the center of pressure of an object is a point where you can assume all of the aerodynamic force on the object is concentrated. 
The center of pressure of an object usually lies closer to those of its parts that deflect or affect air flow the most. The center of pressure of an airplane, therefore, lies near its wings. Similarly, a rocket too has its own center of pressure. Let us examine the example of the paper airplane that we considered earlier again, but this time from the point of view of the concepts of center of gravity and center of pressure. In an unstable airplane, the center of gravity lies behind the center of pressure. When we add a small weight to the front tip of the paper airplane, what we basically do is to bring the center of gravity in front of the center of pressure. When the center of gravity lies in front of the center of pressure, the airplane becomes stable. Stable airplanes do not topple and fall to the ground when there are small disturbances. We will now look at the stability of sounding rockets. Sounding rockets usually travel within the Earth's atmosphere. It is best that they are stable because other than the need to reach a predetermined altitude above the ground, there are no requirements from sounding rockets. Once launched, a sounding rocket should not require any special control during its flight. With an unstable sounding rocket, we will not be able to satisfy any of these conditions. We saw earlier in the example of the paper airplane that it becomes unstable when its center of gravity is behind its center of pressure. The same principle uh, holds for rockets also. In the case of the airplane, stability was achieved by adding a mass on its front tip and thus bringing the center of gravity ahead of the center of pressure. In the case of sounding rockets, stability is achieved by attaching fins at its back end. Fins, which are basically flat surfaces, deflect or affect the airflow significantly and thus bring the center of pressure behind the center of gravity. We will now see how a rocket becomes unstable when its center of pressure is ahead of its center of gravity. When a rocket's body is disturbed from its direction of movement, aerodynamic forces cause a torque about the center of gravity that tends to rotate it further away from its direction of movement. When this is the case, even a small disturbance can cause the rocket to topple out of control. On the other hand, if the center of pressure is behind the center of gravity, any disturbance of the rocket's body from its direction of movement leads to aerodynamic forces that cause a torque which tends to rotate the rocket back towards its direction of movement. In this case, when there are small disturbances, the rocket will be able to rotate back to its direction of movement automatically. Although it is better for uh, sounding rockets to be aerodynamically stable, for launch vehicles it is not so. It is in fact better if launch vehicles are aerodynamically unstable. A launch vehicle will be able to fly the correct trajectory in order to reach the correct orbit only if it is rotated by the correct amounts at various times during its upward flight. In order to be able to turn the vehicle easily, it should be aerodynamically unstable. Otherwise, when we try to turn the vehicle, it will be felt as a disturbance and the rocket will try to come back to its original orientation. We will now see how a launch vehicle, which is intentionally designed to be aerodynamically unstable, prevents itself from toppling when there are small disturbances. We know that in an unstable vehicle, the center of pressure lies in front of the center of gravity. When a disturbance creates a torque that tries to topple the vehicle, there has to be an opposite torque that can balance the vehicle's rotation. This opposing torque is generated by turning the nozzle of the rocket in the appropriate direction. This manner of continuous control of the vehicle's orientation by deflecting nozzles appropriately at every instant in order to cancel out the effects of small disturbances is called active control. In order to have active control, at every instant of flight, the vehicle's orientation has to be observed. It should be sensed whether any disturbance is there or not. And if there is, the nozzles have to be deflected by the appropriate amount in the appropriate direction. 
A flight computer, besides various sensors and other subsystems, is necessary to make all these things happen. It is now very clear that aerodynamics is a very important area that is essential for the design of rockets. We will now see how a rocket's aerodynamic drag, stability and many other parameters are measured. Aerodynamic drag and stability are determined significantly by the manner in which air flows around it. This airflow is the same whether a rocket moves through the atmosphere or air at equal speed is blown at the rocket. It is because of this equivalence that we are able to study about a rocket's aerodynamic characteristics using the device called wind tunnel. A wind tunnel generates uh, winds at very high speeds with the help of huge powerful fans. The scale model of the rocket is kept inside the wind tunnel so that the high speed winds generated by it can flow onto the rocket model. Sensors and other equipments required to measure the resulting aerodynamic forces on the rocket are also attached appropriately. The aerodynamic characteristics of a rocket can be studied with a setup like this. Wind tunnels that can generate winds faster than the speed of sound are called supersonic wind tunnels while the others are called subsonic wind tunnels. The photo that you can see here is that of the Sadish Dhawan wind tunnel in VSSC Trivandrum. Aerodynamic studies can also be carried out through mathematical computations in a computer. For this, very powerful computers are required. This manner of aerodynamic studies is termed computational fluid dynamics analysis. The photo that you see here is that of the Saga 220 supercomputer in VSSC. This supercomputer is mainly used for carrying out CFD analysis of rockets. Okay, I would like to end my video here by saying that if you think you are good at the following, say that is physics, mathematics, computer science, you can think of pursuing the field of aerodynamics as a potential option for your career. Courses that will introduce you to aerodynamics at the undergraduate level are uh, mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering and aeronautical engineering. Thank you.